Hello there Pixel Pushers, Sadiq Hussain here with another Affinity Photo tutorial and uh, now we have continuing the theme of, and I'll put the links in the description and also at the end of the video, continuing the theme of uh, blending composites together and, uh, and in fact I'm going to go straight into it. Uh, here we have a, a, a horse that's taken from a different photograph and that's been placed behind this particular foreground tree and on the right hand side if we just pull this layers palette out you'll be able to see um, I've um, done the um, the usual trick of there's your background and uh, if you disable the horse and disabled uh, I've made a copy I selected and made a copy of that uh, foreground tree trunk uh, and then uh, left it where it is. So it's basically the horse's sandwich between the two uh, layers. And um, and then I've added um, a few extra um, uh, foliage, vegetation at the bottom, some weeds, just to sort of cover up the, where the horse's hooves are um, on the ground, just to make it a bit more realistic. And it's actually selected from these weeds here in the foreground. Uh, and just copied and, and pasted those there. I actually used a brush that I created, uh, uh, again, following the instructions that we've uh, done before, covered before. Again, I'll put a description in the link below. So we've got the horse. Uh, we want the horse behind this tree. So I made a copy of that trunk and then uh, placed it in front, as you can see there, uh, that's just behind it. Uh, place the um, a few uh, vegetation there we're going to be covering that up because what we're actually going to be doing in this video is uh, putting some mist and fogs and the best way to where to get them from those brushes uh, or make them yourself and also uh, pasting them onto and then blending everything together okay so we've got that and uh, first of all what you do is you create a new pixel layer uh, at the top so just a new pixel layer like that I've already done that so let me just delete that for now because whatever we place on top of our image it's best if it goes on a new pixel layer because not only can you transform it and bend it to your liking once you've painted with the brush but also you can change the blend modes you can change the opacity and of course you can apply other effects to it as well from the layer effects panel here as well as adjustment layers of course if you wanted to so there's lots of scope where you can amend, uh, alter, personalize um, whatever's on an individual pixel layer, where you, whereas you don't have the same level or degree of flexibility, if at all, uh, if it's on the same um, layer or an existing layer. So best to build it up um, layer by layer. So there's a blank layer now here, and I've already downloaded a set of brushes called the uh, frog brushes okay now there's plenty there now if you want to know where to get those from of course you can do do a search on the internet free photoshop um, brushes uh, but they tend to be termed photoshop brushes because of course photoshop uh, is still the industry standard and still the dominant uh, photo editing and graphics um, um, software package out there of course affinity photo which is what we're using here is fast approaching fast climbing that ladder and it's still a very very good alternative to photoshop i certainly recommend it as that's why i'm committed to it here on this channel that's not to say we won't be exploring other software we will be but uh, at the moment we're going through really the fundamentals of affinity photo but those brushes for Photoshop will work in Affinity because they're a standard file format and uh, you'll be able to import them. And one of the best places to go and get them from uh, would be from here, Brush Easy, as the name suggests. They're just loads and loads of brushes of all kinds. And just do a search at the top here within the website, Fog and, and Mist, and you'll get loads and loads. I happen to download uh, number eight, uh, this one. Uh, but of course there's loads there i've got six on the other computer uh, and there's loads of others here so not all of them are free but you, you most of them are so just look for the free ones uh, and, and it's fairly straightforward you just double click it download the zip file unzip it to a suitable uh, folder or location on your desktop uh, and then just um, rename it if you want to um, and then uh, uh, import it as we've done before into uh, the brushes palette just by going and make sure the brushes palette is selected you go to um, uh, the uh, hamburger menu on the right hand side uh, and just say import brushes uh, it will ask you 
is that palette there we don't want that there do we um it will ask you wh where is the brush and i've actually got it in a folder called brushes uh where i've created my own brushes as you've seen before and then i've created a subfolder called downloaded so these are downloaded brushes uh, and uh, there's a zip file you un uh, unzip it and just rename it i named it uh, fog brush eight it's it actually was called free fog brushes photoshop brushes so i just uh, renamed it um, and then once it's there you just click on that i've already got it so i'm not going to download it again click open and it will then appear it will give you a notification it'll appear in your list of categories and it will just be another one in here okay so i've got sprays and splatters uh, spatter splatters spotters should say splatters i think uh, and of course ones that i've created uh, custom signature brushes clouds and so on okay so once you've downloaded it and installed it and by the way if anybody wants to uh, see a more detailed video on importing installing brushes which we have done um, uh, from the internet then do uh, drop us a comment in the uh, comment section and of course if i get enough of those i'll more than happily do another one but for now we're just going to i'm just going to assume that you know how to do that or i've gone just gone through it very very briefly and we're going to pick a brush now make sure that layers at the top and then let's just pick um, a let's say this one double clicking it on any brush gives you the brush properties editing them we want to spend we're not painting with it we're just dabbing with it so we want to increase the size of the brush that's all we need to do at this stage so that the brush yeah, when we click on the brush icon on the left hand side brush tool there we go and we just right bracket arrow uh, right bracket sorry right square bracket uh, on the keyboard to resize it don't worry if it's not quite the size that you want if it's a little bit small and you think well that doesn't quite the image is too large resolution wise because it'll only go to a certain size okay let's just say it didn't go to the full size of the image and it was there um, and this is the beauty of putting it on, it on its own separate layer because once we dabbed with it and make sure that it's selected white and not black because of course if it's painting with black then it will be um, more of a sooty mist rather than smoke rather than um, a mist so we're just going to dab it there once okay and in fact while we're here i'm going to just create a new layer and then i'm going to dab another one but this time really reduce the size and just dab that maybe there okay so that's on a separate layer now you can see that the actual brush has got uh, straight edges um, and we don't want that so what we basically do is go to each of the layers that you've done go to the move and resize tool and then that allows us to resize the brush so that the edges are outside of the canvas of the image as you can see uh, that only only uh, removes that edge to it because we don't want that edge but also it allows you to reposition it and um and and, and put the um the density of the of the uh, fog or mist in this case to where you want it so now this one i'm really going to re stretch that one and of course stretching it and, and deforming it means with the same brush you can get a slightly different effect and in fact you can swivel it if you want it to a little bit and just make that a little bit different just so that it gives it a bit of variety and here i'm just going to cover the ground a little bit more okay so we can position that where we want and I've, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that so it covers this area more than anything else okay now you can see that can you see this particular brush has got a soft edge at the top as well so you might want to really stretch that out um, so that it fades out from within uh, the image okay or just obviously pick a different brush so for now i'm just going to pull that so it actually means we've got a bit of mist there and uh, that adds to it i'm going to pull that one out as well of course you could you could put a gradient term um, filter there to fade it out but i'm going to leave it at that for now okay so that gives us a fair bit of mist on the um on the horse 
and on the uh, 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 the rest of the image itself. Maybe they're a bit too strong, so we can go to each of the mist layers and uh, change the opacity down. So we could just bring the opacity down a little bit, so maybe a bit there for that one. And on that one, maybe we could bring that down. We'll just see what it looks like. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy there. I don't want it to come down too much. And we can, of course, change the blend modes uh, and see what works. Um, sometimes lighten or screen really helps. So we'll just change that to, to lighten. Okay. Uh, and I think that's we, we're done, really, because we've sort of hidden... Um, the um, the horse where it's sitting on the ground where we've uh, 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 inserted it but helped to blend it together but what I would really like to do is to put a um, an adjustment layer over the top of either each layer so we could put an adjustment layer for the background adjustment layer for the horse um, in fact I am going to do an adjustment layer for the horse um, because uh, just curves is probably sufficient because I just want to make sure that horse blends in with the background because the horse looks a little bit too bright. So I'm just going to see. Actually, right. That adjustment layer isn't is actually applying to the horse and the background because it's above both layers, as you can see there. So always be mindful. So we want to link it with the horse only. So it's just dragged down and to the right so that the adjustment layer now is a daughter layer of the horse. So now when we make an any adjustment, it will only change the horse, as you can see there. The horse is a little bit too bright, so I don't want it to be too contrasty and bright. I want it to fade into the image a little bit. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Having done that, I'm going to do the same thing with the um, uh, with the background as well okay so I'm just going to take that adjustment layer as is I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it there and position it so that adjustment layer is attached to the background and because it's a copy of it we don't actually need to change it because you can see it's exactly the same okay um, and then the one thing that we haven't done is put that adjustment layer with that extra tree uh, just to make sure that blends in as well the tree trunk i'm going to paste it there and then attach it click and drag and attach it to that and that helps to blend if i just take that adjustment layer here, can you see how that tree trunk here it doesn't quite blend in because it's a little bit brighter a little bit more contrasty than the trees behind it so putting these adjustment layers for each individual element of it really helps to blend it all together. Now on top of all of that, what I'm actually going to do is do an adjustment layer for the whole image. Okay, so just going to do an adjustment layer right at the top and this time we'll do a HSL one. Okay, and just make sure that that HSL adjustment is right near the top okay so that's right at the top so whatever adjustments we make it will be to the whole image so let's just have a look can you see that's now affecting everything we clearly don't want that so we may want to bring down the saturation a little bit maybe change the luminosity see what works that's okay and uh, maybe we want to look at the greens and really bring down the saturation of the greens a little bit. Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, and then in, in, I'm actually going to add a little bit of um, a uh, brightness and contrast. No, shh, shh, shh. yeah, brightness and contrast uh, adjustment layer. Again, make sure that's right to the top, which it is, so it affects the whole image. Of course, we could have combined all the layers first, but it doesn't matter which way you do it. And I just want to increase the contrast a little bit. If you decreased it, you increase it a little bit like that. And that's it. So I'm happy with that. So we've got now got 
a, a horse that looks as if it's for all intents and purposes within that wooded landscape even though that image comes from a stock photograph the wooded uh, image is one of my own from a local uh, woods um, and it's been uh, adjusted and, and of course we've put fog layers so it's really about using fog brushes, mist brushes um, cloud brushes, anything, dust brushes, anything to blend in different elements of an image. And if I had a little bit more area on the canvas here, I'd put a little key line around it, a little border using the effects, but I won't do that now. Um, or you could um, uh, um, uh, help to blend the whole image together by either converting into black and white um, or uh, applying some other effect. So the key thing is, Bring your elements together, then blend them using something that goes over the top of it um, and also where the elements come together and then adjust, make adjustments to it. So you might sort of say, well, that brightness and contrast, I don't want it that strong, bring down the opacity. Um, the fog brush, uh, you know, I don't want it to be that strong. I've already bring, brought it down to 40%. You could bring it up there, look but I'm not, because I don't want to obscure the horse's face too much, so I'll bring it down to maybe 30%, and I'm happy with that. Okay, so give that a try. Um, get uh, uh, free brushes from um, uh, a Brush Easy or other similar site. Download them, unzip them, and uh, install them as I've uh, shown you there. But again, if you want to leave any comments about how you would like to improve your skills in this area, then do drop us a line and um, and uh, if we get enough of those requests obviously we'll cover that so thanks for watching and uh, do subscribe if you haven't already and of course like it if you found it useful thanks very much and i'll see you next time